Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be working with entities within Spring Boot. What's an entity? Why should we use it? So an entity is an annotation that we can use within Spring Boot on just a simple Pojo class and it allows us to map all the fields within that Java object or Kotlin or whatever language you're using to an actual table and it creates those fields in that table as well. So let's jump into some of the code. So as you can see, this is just a basic Spring Boot application. We've talked about this many times before and there's even a video on getting this boilerplate basic Spring Boot application up and running. So if you don't have one of those, look at uh, the previous video. But we're gonna jump into creating a package and we're just gonna call it person. And then within this package, we're going to create a class with the same name, person. So once we've got this, we want to add our annotation to the very top of the class. So to do that, we just say at entity, like so. And then we need to determine what we want inside our person table. So it's going to create a table in our database called person. Now, if we wanted to call it something else, we would do uh, something like this. We would say at uh, table, and after we say at table, we just say name, and then set it equal to, you know, whatever we want. So maybe it's not person that we want to call it for whatever reason. Maybe it's something like user. So we would go and call our table user like this. But apart from that, we're just going to stick with using person as both the name of our Java class and the name of our uh, table in SQL. So we're going to delete that, but the option is there for whatever reason if, if you want to call your, your table something slightly different than your Java class. Now, within the Java class, you need to determine what you want. So just think about what you'd want in your table. So first of all, you might want to have like a person ID to be able to uniquely identify each person. Um, you might also want to store their name. You might also want to store their age. Um, age probably isn't, isn't the best example. You probably might want a date of birth rather than an age because an, an age will change. But for this, we're just going to pick some random values, right? So we're going to start off with, we're going to say private long, and this is going to represent the ID. So this is going to be unique. And then along with the ID, we want to have, we want to have a string. And our string can be name. And we could have, we could have an age here, or we could have a date of birth. As I said, date of birth would be better, but we're just going to put in age today. And we're going to set this equal to age. And I'm just going to change this to uh, uh, capital. Okay, so once we've got this, we need to, we can add some other attributes or add other annotations to our ID. So if we want to generate an ID automatically so you don't want to pass one in you can do this uh, just at ID and then along with that if we wanted to generate one we do this we say at generate value and then we have to tell it the type of value we want so rather than it saying the type it calls it the strategy strategy equals generate type and then auto that will allow it to generate it automatically for us okay so the next thing we want to think about is we have our table we have three fields in our table one of them is going to be a primary key that will be the ID it's going to be generated automatically for us we need to think about our constructor so in IntelliJ we can just simply generate our constructor like so and then we need to determine what we want inside our constructor. So 
do we want to have all these three fields so you could select all these three fields and have them like this but what will actually happen is if we use a constructor like this it'll mean when we do an insert statement into our table it'll look for an ID along with a name and an age but what we've done up here is we want to just automatically generate that ID when it's been put uh, when a new field or a new uh, row has been created in the table so we want to just avoid that uh, so what we can do is just delete ID from our constructor and delete it from the parameters as well because it's not going to be passed in and now we can go and just have our constructor with two parameters and it means it's less work for you when you're doing an insert statement or when the users are putting data in the database it's it's something that they don't have to worry about then we also probably want getters and setters as well so let's go and make some of those so if we just right click here you can say generate and we'll go down to getters and setters and we'll say we just select them all. Uh, we probably don't want uh, a setter for the ID. We might want to make this final, but maybe not. So this is our class. This is just a simple uh, POJO, plain old Java object class with a couple of annotations added to it. And now if you were to go and just run your Spring Boot application and you look inside your database, your database will now have a person table. You may need to do some changes within this application.properties file. So just ignore this. So if I look at this top bit, uh, those two aren't important. If I just look at this bit here, this is where I've defined the information about my database. So I've told Spring Boot within this application.properties file that I'm going to be using a H2 database. I've told them about the driver, I've told them about the username and the password, which is nothing, and the, the type of SQL dialect, which is which is H2. Now, if you're running, let's say, maybe Postgres or Oracle or some other type of database, your yours will look a little bit different, right? So you'll have to put in the JDBC connection for the Postgres or for the Oracle but you can find those online but if you're having issues you can just use the H2 database which is an in-memory database so if you just copy and paste uh, this information that I have just stick it into your application.properties exactly and then if you connect to that H2 database you'll be able to see that table or if you have Postgres or whatever um, and it's connected already, then you'll you'll see it pop up in your Postgres or Oracle or MySQL or whatever type of database you're using. So I hope you've gained something from the video. If you did like it, leave it a like, so don't forget to subscribe and have a good day.